other big international headline, the World Bank today announced a $1 billion package for India. The World Bank's uh, first set of aid projects will be $1.9 billion, which uh, assists 25 countries around the world. But for India, it gets the majority of that of $1 billion, the largest chunk of emergency financial assistance coming to India. And uh, main focus, of course, on emergency equipment and equipment for doctors and ventilators with that $1 billion aid. And joining me now is the country director of the World Bank, Mr. Junaid Kamal Ahmed. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed, for joining me this evening. Why did, it, why did the World Bank decide to give a majority of a $1.9 billion package to India? I mean, of course, we are 1.3 billion people, but uh, what was the decision based on? Sonia, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. So, and it's not that the World Bank decided uh, to give its majority of its money to uh, uh, India. Mm -hmm. This is a facility that's going to uh, be accessible by the world. It's a question of population and the size of the country. Uh, India is a region by itself. Uh, you know, I'm a Bangladeshi citizen, but I'm also a South Asian member, mm -hmm. and I'm a resident of New Delhi. And if you want to protect Bangladesh, you have to intervene in India also. Mm -hmm. And I think the world recognizes that the health of India will have an impact globally. But it's not uh, that we chose uh, in one way or the other. It's really driven uh, by the needs and driven by the population count. No, absolutely. And I think really the India model, which is emerging of how we are fighting the coronavirus outbreak, is something that I think many other countries are looking at as well. And uh, just, to, uh, just to ask on that, because uh, there's been so much focus on actually right now saving lives, just the top priority. But there are also so many questions which are linked to that. For instance, the economy, what the global impact of lockdowns will be on the economy and people's lives in the financial sense. What does the World Bank see this as? What will the impact be? Sonia, it's important to compare today's global shock with the 2008 financial uh, shock. Mm -hmm. The 2008 financial shock was a demand shock. And the response was, let's get demand boosted again. Let's get an economic stimulus and we can move on. This is a supply shock and it's related to the health sector. You have to deal with the health sector first before you can deal with the rest of the economy. And because the entry into the health sector is one about social distancing, it implies that you have to hold back the economy. Mm -hmm. You have to lower the tempo of the economy so that you can actually enable social distancing. This is unique. In this financial shock, it was about stimulating the economy immediately. Here, you have to stabilize the health sector by social distancing, which means automatically the economy must slow down. Mm -hmm. The bridge in between is social protection. In other words, you have to bridge the poor, you have to bridge the economy, stabilize the economy, that once you're able to maintain a stabilization of the health, then you can in in intervene and create that economic stimulus. So it's a very different storyline of how to engage. And around the world, you're beginning to see different engagements by different countries in social distancing, which is really related uh, to the health uh, health story. Second, underpinning the social, uh, social uh, uh, distancing is a complete focus on prevention, detection, screening, uh, isolation, uh, communication, surveillance, uh, surveillance of communities, mm -hmm. public information, building up capacity of, of protective gears for our first responders, as well as the citizens, because I think getting masks to everyone is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. This whole approach on the health sector is really where our first round loan, uh, loan is, the billion dollar loan. It's directly in partnership with Government of India, led by Department of Economic Affairs and under the leadership of the health In fact, that's a, that's a very important, interesting point you're making because you're saying perhaps that when we look at that, you can't look at this on economic analysis. It's about saving human capital is the only way you can actually build on a strong economy. So the short-term economic gain is actually worth it if you're saving lives. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's why connecting the health expenditure to the social protection program, and in particular, the Pradhan Mantri uh, Garib Kalyan is the first step towards the social protection of ensuring that the very poor have access to resources and are able to access medical services. By the way, our program is really uh, is really put through the public health sector. So this is about district hospitals. This is about primary health clinics. It's about the local. Uh, I have to say that one of the things that we don't say enough 
is that India has to unleash its federalism. At the end of the day, it's local leaders, state leaders, that must convince the population about social distancing, that must intervene in the health the health sector and really make the make the impact that we we hope uh, no, and, the health intervention. And I will. think just taking taking picking up from that uh, point you're making because really when we're talking about ensuring uh, the the prime minister's uh, scheme for the poorest of the poor that you uh, referred to, but there, there has been worry and questions raised about the fact that the impact of this lockdown is perhaps borne by the middle class in a very different way from the ones who are suffering the most. And in a sense that when you ha hear people talk about, will we survive the lockdown? That's our big worry. Will we be able to feed ourselves, our children? We'll worry about the virus later, but our first priority is making sure that hunger is not something which is actually uh, impacting us and our lives, our social capital. Yes, absolutely. And I, I would add to that, remember that India the, the unorganized sector, the informal sector, is a very vital part of your economy. So protecting the informal sector and the labor there is extremely important. I really welcome the fact that the uh, government has come up with a social protection uh, program, and they're now uh, discussing with us and other multilaterals how to strengthen that social, uh, social uh, protection program. Issues of migrants, issues of unorganized uh, uh, workers. How do you get them the resources? Now, here, India has an advantage. You have Aadhaar, you have an IT system, you have Jandhan, you have uh, uh, the JAM process. You really can scale this up, and that's what we're going to be focusing on immediately now that we've taken uh, the, the loan on, uh, on the health uh, to the board. The next right. program will be on the social protection. Precisely what you're saying, ensure the poor are protected while the health interventions are happening before exactly. the economic stimulus Because I think in. those first uh, 36 hours after that announcement were really heart-wrenching to see those scenes of migrant labor moving. But thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed, for joining us, detailing the World Bank and India's plans for that $1 billion aid uh, package. Uh, thanks very much.